everybody. Thanks for watching. And this is about the SharkVac UV 440 26. Had a problem with this after many years of use. Uh, suddenly it just quit working altogether. No um, apparent reason. All right. So to dig into this, uh, the first thing I did is kind of break the whole thing down. Uh, take off all the tubes and anything that's you know, on the vacuum itself and break it down to its basic motor uh, system. You know, these tubes all come out, obviously unplug it. Um, this is another view of what that looks like. This is my actual vacuum here. Uh, this tube comes out, this tube comes out, <clears throat> and it all pretty much comes apart. Uh, and you're left with this little uh, assembly here. All right, so the next step I took to troubleshoot the problem was I, I really thought it was kind of one of these wires over here that had broken or something inside that had broken. Um, so I took apart the motor assembly. So you've got a whole bunch of little screws here. Uh, in my case, this did not fix the problem. Um, so Anyways, once you get all those screws out, uh, you can then open the case. And this is what it looks like inside. Once you've got it open, you can access a couple connectors right here. You can then check all your wires, your motor, um, just to see if you've got continu continuity through the motor uh, and out to your plugs. Uh, again, this is where I thought it, it had broken, um, but uh, that was not the case. You can see here, here's another uh, set of wires uh, that could have broken as well uh, that go into the motor assembly. All right, so to get further into this uh, machine, you really have to take this plate off right here. So take out these four screws right here and then you've got four more screws uh, to take. One of the screws is behind this white label. So um, don't forget to get that one out. And then uh, there's two other screws right here and here that you'll have to take out and this whole assembly lifts out. Uh, that allows you to uh, get into where the switch is. <clears throat> That's kind of the next logical step. So this is what it looks like when that switches out um, of the handle portion. You've got three leads going to the switch. So take a picture of yours so that you get these leads back in the correct position. This is how that switch is held in. So to get it out, you just have to squeeze on these tabs. There's four of them on the switch. You just have to squeeze those in so that they lo loosen up from uh, the base assembly, if you will. Here's what it looks like when that switches out. You've got your three leads that go to the switch. Just make sure you document it or take a picture. All right, here's a close-up on the switch. To get into the switch, uh, you have to separate the, uh, the case of the switch from the button. Um, so this little tab here uh, you can release that by putting a small screwdriver in here and just prying this slightly away from the body of the switch. And this tab will then uh, be able to pop out. You'll have to do that on both sides. So make sure you do that. And once you've got that, that whole face off or the switch face off, you'll see inside the switch you've got two prongs and I can only see one in this picture, but you'll have to believe me. There's another one in here. Uh, there's two prongs uh, and they all have, or they both have contacts um, <clears throat> inside that switch. So what I found is that the contacts for some reason had uh, become very corroded. Uh, so I got in there with a screwdriver and some sandpaper and just clean those contacts, both the top and the bottom on each side so that they would make good quality contacts with each other. The other thing is I sprayed this whole thing out with contact cleaner uh, that had a protectant film 
Um, you can get that at almost any hardware store. But uh, I did take that extra step to uh, hopefully make that work a little better. All right, so I did have success with it afterwards. Um, and uh, I'll show you that here in this little video. All right, so here's a video of it working. Let's see if it's going to be a split. Let's just go to one. Just the motor comes on. Put the pin. And the uh, beater bar comes on. So, you know, that actually works pretty well. So that's pretty much it. That's the sum total of fixing that back. Uh, it didn't cost me anything except the time to do it. And I hope this helps.